All right, guys, Adam Trigger, wagertalk.com. We roll on opening night, November 4th, as we knock out preview after preview. And without further ado, your back-to-back national champion, UConn Huskies. And who better to bring in to break that down with me than my buddy Aaron Kidd, who two years ago, I split a nice 30-1 to ticket on the UConn Huskies to win. And then unfortunately, last year, we kind of jumped off, didn't play it. They win again with arguably one of the best, well, not arguably, one of the best teams in the history of college basketball. So we're here to talk about them this year, and I'm just going to ask you right off the top, AK, how does UConn possibly exceed expectations after having one of the best teams in the history of the sport? You know, Trig, I I think it's almost impossible to exceed expectations after back-to-back, you know, national champions. You kind of mentioned it, man they kind of had one of the best teams I've ever seen in college basketball last year. So I think we may not necessarily see them take a step back, but I do, uh, you know, for the purpose of the show, I think there are going to be a lot of spots to bet against UConn this year. Yeah, without a doubt, they're going to be priced as a premium option, maybe the premium option in the betting market for college basketball. But I want, I think it's important to, to point out that there's two trains of thought here and both have some merit. One UConn's the New England Patriots, like during their run through, you know, through all those rings, right? Where the betting markets can't even really quantify just how how dominant and how good the, of a team they are, the dynasty they have, so on and so forth. The other thing is is or the other train of thought is the one that I think you and I share, the one that you just mentioned, that UConn can't possibly replicate the historic season they had last year. Now, I do think it's worth pointing out that they're they're in an unprecedented situation where they have the best coaching staff, arguably the best coach in the game right now in Dan Hurley, but more importantly, he found a way to retain all of his staff, which is very, very rare. When you win back-to-back national champions championships, it's almost a given that all your assistants are going to go on and, and, and grab jobs. And it, it's almost like he's positioned them in the market that they're such an elite destination for for basketball at this point that all of those assistants are still there and holding out for big jobs that being said is this can this coaching staff take this roster and overachieve from last year my gut tells me no ak talk about that a little bit do you think that the coaching staff has the players to exceed last year or is there no chance I think I fall a little bit in the middle. I I, I think they certainly can. I, I do agree. I, I do think Dan Hurley's the best coach in college basketball. I just think the way he's able to get these kids to uh, just buy into what he's selling, they follow him. Um, and, and like you said, I think that comes with assistant coaches too. A lot of these kids gel more with assistant coaches than they do the head coach. They spend more time with the assistant coaches. So I think that does play a big part into it. But to, to have a chance to repeat as three-time national champions – Sure, it's a possibility, but it's a challenge when you have to replace multiple starters. Um, you're a lot younger than you were. Some of those teams were a lot more vet, but you know had more veteran presence than them. I just don't think the all the stars necessarily aligned this year, Trig, and I and I'll be looking uh, myself to play against them. Some, yeah. So let's let's talk about what in theory UConn would have to do to replicate last season or even come close. You lose Donovan Klingon, Tristan Newson. Tristan Newton, Stephen Castle, Cam Spencer, okay? You have Alex Carabin back, but you have to think that that a little bit more is going to be asked, uh, uh, you know, of him on the offensive end um, this season. He's going to have to be more of a focal point of the offense, whereas in years past, he was able to, to just kind of do his thing, right, in in that, you know, with, with great scores around him. So I have a list of, of things what if it doesn't work, right? And the first one I come to is Caravan. And, you know, he's Hurley has raved about his coachability being like just the dream player of a coach, but they're going to ask more of him offensively this year. And it's like, what if that doesn't work? I, I would say big question number one for you, AK, if Caravan is, a, is not a bigger part of the offense, where do they go? Well, I mean, I think I think you would try to lean on Aiden Mahimi, uh, you know, our, our old friend from – uh, St. Mary's, but once again, we've seen games where Aiden Mahimi can't step up. Um, there's been times where he, as a scorer, went cold, and and against lesser competition, in my opinion. I mean, we're playing in the Big East, and in my opinion, the Big East is 
one of the best conferences, if not the best conference in college basketball, especially this year. I think that conference is going to be very tough. And and if you go through patches where you can't score the ball against some of these teams like Creighton, Xavier, I think you might be in trouble some nights, Trude. Yeah, that that's what I had as bullet point number two, big question mark number two, Aiden Mahaney. In my opinion, when you look at what they have come in or who's going to now be starting, Mahaney's the one that like I think you could make the parallel to Cam Spencer and you could make the the point that, okay, like, Mahaney potentially could fill those shoes. But my biggest question mark with him was the physicality when he got playing the bigger schools. Remember, at St. Mary's, you get in a conference play, you're playing Pepperdine, you know, San Francisco, like manageable teams. And I really thought that Mahaney struggled with physicality at times. And then there's no question, he took a step back from his freshman year to his sophomore year, just overall production, overall numbers. Now you're going to ask him to do it in the Big East, Granted, he's going to have better players around him than he did the last two years at St. Mary's, but you're asking him to do it in the Big East. So I think with the physicality that comes on a night-in, night-out basis in the Big East. So that right there, I'm I'm with you. That's question mark number two and and one that I kind of lean toward. You know, maybe he doesn't just come in and replace a guy like Cam Spencer. And even if he does, who is replacing the other three? And that brings me to big question number three, Hassan Diara. Great off the bench, but now it looks like they're going to ask him to be the starting point guard. Is there any way that he is able to replicate Tristan Newton's production and be a scorer that now is probably going to look, they're going to look to for 25, 30 minutes a game as opposed to coming in to play 15, 20 off the bench? Well, yeah, that was kind of going to be my point, Trey, is when, you know, when you think of traditional point guards, you just don't need somebody to facilitate. They really depended on Newton to really score the ball. So you were, it's kind of a double-edged sword. You don't just have to be the facilitator, run the point. You're also look to to score. I don't know if that's possible with him. I don't know if he's that guy. And I, and I may be completely wrong, but I, I, I don't think I am. AK, when I did this preview last year, um, I I think CT and I previewed UConn last year, and we came into the preview thinking that uh, Castle could really be that guy for UConn. And I would would argue that – well, I don't think it's an argument. uh, Stephen Castle exceeded every possible expectation for a freshman last year. You know, for, for, for a freshman last year, exceeded every possible expectation. Now you have an incoming freshman here in Liam McNeely who's pretty much going to be asked to do the same thing. On paper, he's a five-star guy. But how likely do you think it is that he lives up to that expectation, really not lives up to it? He, In my opinion, he has to ex- go above and beyond to replicate what UConn had at that role last year. Yeah, I think you'd be asking him and, and a lot of these guys to – overachieve with and, and I just don't think it's possible you know certainly it's possible I just don't think it's likely I think when you've won back-to-back national championships we haven't even talked about their schedule yet Trig, but we'll talk about it a lot of these teams are going to be hunting it's going to be their their national championship every night playing UConn and you get a little bit more tenacity you get a little bit more sense of urgency uh, when these guys, when these young kids, that's what their goal is. They want to beat UConn this year. And I think we're going to see it in out-of-conference play. They've got a tough out-of-conference schedule. And I know we're going to see it <clears throat> night in and night out in the Big East, True. Yeah, and, and I think we may have buried the lead a little bit here <clears throat> because there's no question that even even with the guys that they lost and, and bringing in McNeely, Mahaney, DR probably moving into the starting five, You know, Samson Johnson moving into the starting five. They bring in Terrace Reed from Michigan. They've got Jalen Stewart off the bench. This is still a very good collection of basketball players. This is still a very good team. As sports bettors, we need to say, is this team going to live up or exceed market expectations? And that's where I just don't think there's any chance that they that they that they do it. You gotta remember, you and I bet this team in 2023 to win the NCAA championship in late January. We got 30 to 1 on UConn in late January to win the title. The, the ex- expectations weren't there. And I think going into last year, you could really make the case that last year's team was better than the championship team from the year before. Like that to me was somewhat known going into the season. I remember it was, oh, if Klingon gets healthy and his foot's or his ankle's okay, this team is better than the UConn team from the year before. This year's UConn team is nowhere near 
last year's UConn team, in my opinion. And I think you can really just, as you start to look at who's gone and who might fill that that role, I think it's pretty simple that that, but yeah, I, th- I think it's very clear. You take out Klingon, Newton, Castle, Spencer. Let's just assume Mahaney takes the, the spot of Spencer. You've got McNeely. You're asking him to, I mean, that's just a massive ask for a freshman. And then you're basically asking Terrace Reed from Michigan to come in and go off or rotation guys like Diara, Johnson, and Stewart to not only play a starting role, but produce like a guy like Klingon or a guy like Newton. What am I missing here, AK? That sounds virtually impossible for UConn to do. Trig, I think you nailed it right on the head. It's it's an incredibly tough task, and I just I don't personally see it happening. Yeah, I, and and when it comes to you know what we do in these previews, it's all about betting and how do we get an edge betting on a team. I think this one's pretty clear. There should be so many good spots to fade UConn against the number this year. Now, I'm not saying that they can't, you know, Dan Hurley can't work his magic and this coaching staff isn't going to be like super prepared. I think on a night-to-night basis in the Big East, you know, you're going to see like UConn's always going to be prepared. They're not going to be a team. They're not the team that I really want to like bet against when when the market is undervaluing them. Like maybe they lost a game. Maybe they lost back-to-back games in Big East play. They'll be ready for that game. But I think in the early going, you mentioned it. They have a tough schedule. And they this is everyone's Super Bowl. Everyone's taking their best shot at UConn. I, I just I see some really good opportunities to play against this team, against the number, because AK, the betting market, the people are basically giving this team a three-peat at this point. At least that's what I'm hearing. Like, you know, what what have you heard just from your Twitter timeline, from the people you talk to? It feels like UConn slotted in for championship number three, and I just don't think that's going to be the case. You know, I have a very good friend, Trig, that he's not necessarily in the gambling space like we are, but he's just a huge college basketball fan, a fanatic, watches hours and hours and hours of college basketball every day, and he is just determined that UConn might not lose a game all year. And and he really is he really thinks that. He thinks they're going to be as good, even better, that Dan Hurley will have them boys to play every night. And, that, and that's maybe true. He will. But I think what you really have to look at, too, is it's not just filling the shoes of the guys that UConn lost. It's also how good some of these other teams, especially in the conference, have gotten. The Creightons, the Xaviers, these teams are better than what they were last year and what they were the last few years, mm-hmm. in my opinion. So I, I think it's not just – well, what can UConn do? It's just how good these other teams can play against them. And and we both mentioned it, man. Every single night, whether it's out of conference or in conference, it's going to be someone's Super Bowl. It's going to be someone's national championship. And it's just a little bit different when you are hunted every single night. Yeah, well, let's let's finish the preview there and talk a little bit about Big East futures as it pertains to, like, there's this there's probably unprecedented value in the Big East futures market this year because you typically don't have a conference champion that's like priced so out of control based on like previous seasons. And I think we're seeing that a little bit with UConn where like you mentioned two really good teams, Xavier, Creighton, that are that are be, that are becoming afterthoughts based on the fact that you know we're crowning UConn the Big East champ already. I know you particularly like Creighton Talk to me about the number that you, you you're seeing, or some of the you know what you were able to play them at, but also why it's like a really like a viable option to win this conference, you know, and, and knock UConn off there as the top team in the Big East. Yeah, so to, uh, kind of two parts to that is Creighton with McDermott. I just think you know with getting Kalkbrenner back again, you're going to have one of the best players in the conference. You know, the rim protector, Ashworth. A guy that we followed through his whole career is a guy that can shoot the lights out of the gym on every any given night. Um, getting Pop Isaacs, who I think is going to be that guy um, that we saw at Texas Tech, but I think you're going to see an even more efficient version of him. Um, getting the kid from Arizona State, I just think that team is – I think 
particularly besides Connecticut, I think Xavier and Creighton are the two deepest teams in this conference. You know, when you uh, talk about what I played on Creighton, I actually played Creighton uh, to win the national championship. You can find that 45 to one. I think there may even be some 47 to one, things like that out the great, you know, prices out there. I haven't played in the big, win the big East tournament, but I think it's a great bet. And I, I think just taking a shot with Creighton is, is the team that I'm looking to play on, but you can make a case for Xavier too. Xavier's going to be super deep. They got Maddox from, uh, Toledo. We've seen what he can do. Um, that team's going to be healthy. You got to remember, Xavier was banged up last year, especially at the end of last season. They were super banged up. Um, so I think you're going to have a really good Xavier team, a really good Creighton team. And um, I, I know there's some guys out there that believe, you know, that Seton Hall, and, and of course, you got shocked with Marquette, but you know you're going to get Marquette's best effort every night, too, Trick. So I definitely think it's some good ways to, to maybe not necessarily fade UConn, but to go against UConn in other ways. Yeah, I just did a quick search. Uh, obviously, futures really are going to vary from book to book, but you can get Creighton right now in the plus 350 to, to plus 400 range to win the Big East regular season. I think that's a great bet. You, you have to think that, like, especially if UConn faced a little adversity, let's say they had an injury or two, you know Dan Hurley is, is going to be focused on that NCAA tournament. That's the only thing that really matters for this UConn team. So if you if you could give me Creighton, who I, I agree with you, I think they're closer to UConn than maybe the market suggests. At four to one, the Big East, to, four to one to win the Big East, that's a bet I'm willing to to, to sort of sign off on. I think that's a fantastic, uh, you know, preseason bet. And I don't bet a lot of stuff preseason, but I think that's a fantastic, you know, preseason bet as sort of a way to oppose, you know, the the valuation of 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 UConn right now which I think is just a little too high. We'll cut it right there for the for this preview. AK, you and I cashed a 30 to 1 ticket on UConn 2 years ago, but I think we might be a little bit anti Huskies this year. We'll see how it plays out. Thank you again for for joining. Thank you to my guest Aaron Kidd for joining for this preview. You can check out all of our previews over on the Wager Talk YouTube channel. Nice playlist, 30 different previews, a bunch of different teams, a lot of great betting info and uh you can you give me a follow at Adam Trigger WT, but all of these previews are up in one nice place on the Wager Talk YouTube channel. Like and subscribe, and we can continue bringing them to you throughout the season. Again, Adam Trigger signing off. Check out all our previews, and we can't wait till College Hoop starts on November 4th.